Now to keep the relationship straight for everybody so we can all pass an ASE L or ASE uh, A8 or L1 sometime in the future, very important for that. You look at what the, the overall numbers are and you keep this little graph in the back of your head. In green, we're zero to 10, positive or negative. We're cool, no big issues there. Normal engine variations can cause a fluctuation between zero and 10. You might see a little into the teens, you start raising an eyebrow. You know the PCM is, that's when mode six, we th see things getting a little bit close to the edge and flagging a yellow number in the TID, SIDS, so forth categories. When we look at a, no, a mode six on a PC based scanner, they can give you multi colors. And so we really don't typically see a light come on. It's gonna vary from manufacturer to manufacturer, engine to engine, until we're in the red positive 20 or negative 20. So green zone, good. Yellow zone, maybe a concern. Red zone, if the light's not on, it will be. Fix the car before it leaves. You see the 128 number, by the way, a little trivia. That was the old block learn integrator numbers from General Motors. 128 was stoic, no trim adjustment, and a number below 128, 100, or above 128, 140, that was adding or reducing fuel. Now, as we correlate this into what the O2 sensor activity is doing, upper left-hand corner, we've got a good switching time. Uh, we don't really have a, an x-axis to tell us what the uh, time base is, but we'll just say it's switching at an 80 millisecond, which would be a decent switching time for a, fuel, uh, for a O2 sensor, a switching design, conventional O2 sensor. And it is going as high as the, say, 8, 900 millivolts, as low as 100 to 150 millivolts. That's a good O2 sensor. But if we see over in the lower left-hand corner, an O2 sensor is biased lower. It doesn't really get much over the 450 millivolts uh, of uh, bias voltage uh, provided by some PCMs to the, to the sensor. It mainly hangs out below that. So that's indicating we're running lean. So we have a lower uh, air fuel, have a higher air fuel ratio, actually a lean ratio above 14.7 to one. You look at the upper right hand corner and you see it hanging out high. We don't get much below 450 very often, 450 millivolts, but we do see eight, 900 millivolts a lot. So that's a rich mixture being sensed. That's gonna result in a lower than stoic number. We'll say 12 to one air, rate, air fuel ratio. And that's gonna result in a fuel trim number that needs to go lower. And the picture on the lower right hand corner, that's a O2 sensor that should set a code, but if it doesn't, don't pay attention to your fuel trim because whenever you have an O2 sensor malfunctioning, don't pass go, collect $200, fix that problem first. Misfire is the same way. Fuel trim can be worked on later if you still have a problem. So make sure you got a good O2 sensor to work with. Now, as we move all this together, the graph that showed fuel trim acceptability, borderline in yellow, and then red should set a code and how it, it corresponds to the actual O2 values. If we graph or scope an O2 sensor of the traditional switching design, as we see it go full rich and full lean, not hanging out either one of those two places, a good switching time, we see it in the green, zero to 10 either way. But as we see the upper right hand corner hanging out biased high, that's a rich mixture, high O2 voltage, rich mixture. We're gonna go negative into the red and that's gonna be reducing the base pulse width by a particular percentage. The same thing, lower left hand corner, that O2 pattern is biased high. We're really rich, or at least the computer is seeing this because this thinks it's rich. And we start to then have a positive number, I'm sorry, lean. It's lower, bias low, it's lean, so it's going to add a positive number. Too much air, not enough fuel, we spray more fuel, we increase the base pulse width.